monumental. It was never about a statue. In the shadows, in the valleys where people often didn't look, there was a group of people who were watching. Around our Blue Dot community of Charlottesville, Virginia, there was a sea of red who believed Black Lives Matter was a terrorist organization and that blacks were making too much noise. These shadows believe that they were losing power and influence as people of color rose up, that their city was changing and not for the better. The 27-year-old outspoken vice mayor was also a loudmouth black supremacist who only stirred things up, and they were determined to show him that they would do whatever it took to make America and Charlottesville great again. A man walked up to me and introduced himself as Wesley. This Wesley was the commander of the regional Sons of the Confederacy, and he wanted to have a moment with me. I'm fresh out of the gym, fresh off a of prayer, and in my mind, I'm ready for whatever. Wesley asked if we could speak in private, and I obliged. He said to me, I just want you to know that I may not agree with you on this removing the statue, but I can see how it would make you and people who are like you offended. My family fought in the Civil War. I love my heritage, but I don't hate anyone. Some people here just hate you. I'm not one of them. I have a lot of respect for you. I was absolutely floored by his comments. It was the kind of thing that let me know that God was present. It was an eerie sight throughout the city. It had begun to rain. Televisions throughout showed the painful images of a vehicle plowing through a crowd. The nation was watching us, but inside the city, this was not a movie or some reality show. This was real life. A lot of people were staying inside of their homes as no one really knew if the deranged people from earlier in the afternoon had left or if they were still here, waiting for another attack once the darkness came. As I went into one of our public housing sites, West Haven, I was approached by residents from throughout the neighborhood. They asked was I okay and were they going to be safe? The looks on their faces were somewhere between fear and willing to do whatever they humanly had to in order to protect their neighborhood, their community, their family, their city. I told them that the worst was behind us, but that was a lie. I smiled and tried to pretend that everything was okay, but that too was a lie. The truth was that I didn't know. 